Hi everyone, just going to record an ICC game. I've just completely crucified my rating tonight. Um, I've gone from below, above 1600 to just over about 1500, so trolls are going to be licking the lips, I'm afraid. Um, but hopefully I can recover now, I feel a bit more refreshed. When I were French. Could be a poison part line. Is it my lucky day? If it takes, give white the double pawns in return for the M. Yes, Queen C7, double exclamation mark. Queen takes G7, double question mark next. Yep. Now will I fall for the C takes D4 trap? No, he hasn't. He's played knight the correct move. Now one of them, F4 next, bishop D7, rapid development. Queen D3 is the next fairy move. Will he play it? Will he play it? Well, he's out of a bucket, it sounds like. He's 116 points higher than me. But it's a trappy line, this. Failure to know what you're doing equals a good drub in. As um, Kenny Quinn found out. Please see Tim Elton, Kenny Quinn versus Tim Elton down in the poison pot winner worth our details. That's Queen D3, come on, I don't know the and you don't, but the problem is there's nothing you to do if the um, dot got Queen D3. Um, oh, he's done it. Um, I think you take now because he's threatening to take the pawn. And if you take this with knight, you play A6 to stop it going into B5, and if you're up B1, then knight A5 to C4. Oh, he's not took it, but. Can't really protect it. Maybe I should just castle long. I'm at a book now, but I'm not sure if this is even a book move. I'll play knight f5. I'll sip of iron brew, as usual. I'll play d4 if you don't protect it. So if you don't take it, I meant. Failure to take on c3 equals d4. And um, I won't even be a pawn down, and I'll have two real strong central pawns in my neck, maybe coming to e3. I just took it. That's a shame. That's an absolute shame, that. There's also a nest little trap sometimes. If white goes up b1, and if you castle along, then queen takes a6, he's winning for white, so I need to avoid that. So if I castle along now, you've got queen takes a6, b takes a6, bishop takes a6. And then I have to give my queen up for nothing with queen b7, so um, that's unplayable. Now I'm not sure what you actually do after this. Um, oh yeah, it's knight a5. Silly me, I can't remember the theory I've been playing for Yonks. Well, not Yonks actually, but I've only had two serious games of it. And in one of my bullet fell for queen c3, double exclamation mark. So knight c4, because you aim to put your knights in f5 and c4 in this line. To get to apply maximum pressure to White's discoordinated position, and if the knight c3 moves, bishop b5 becomes very tasty, making the inv inverted commas bad bishop good. Hmm. And also, when the knight comes into c4, there's no queen takes a6 threat, so you can castle along safely. And then I'm going to try and hack him up. If, he's gonna, if he tries to utilise his h pawn, I've got rook g3 as well. So he's moved his knight back. And they're coming to c4. And then, um, what to do next? I think I'll castle long now I can, and then I'll try and launch an attack against his king through the centre. So he's moved his knight to d4. Oh, I could have gone bishop b5 actually, I completely forgot about that. I'm quite tempted to uh, move the knight to h4 to try and apply pressure to g2. But I'm not sure if that's that good. I can take the knight. He'll take it with the queen. In fact, I think I'm best taking it off, actually. And then maybe moving my bishop to b5. Yeah, I'll do that. Try and get as much activity as possible. Hmm. Right, um, maybe get some pressure against C2 going. Always stacked a pawn. Just try and get some pressure on. Maybe he wants to play bishop take C4, then pawn the rook or queen on B6. But if I take him, I'm also attacking C2, so maybe it's not that great for white. But I have to be careful. I have to be careful. I'll get hacked now. So now, um, take with pawn. He's gonna play his rook on B6, I think. And then maybe D6. 
Can I say if I take on C2 and get a past C palm? Hmm, complex. Oops, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What does it mean Queen A5 was missed? Um, what if I'm, when did I miss Queen A5? So Rook D8, Bishop D6 is rather annoying. In fact, Queen A5 check can be met by Bishop B4. This bishop is coming to d6 and there isn't a lot I can do. Well, you know what? I'm going to sneakily grab a pawn. <laughs> that's, that's brave, that. That requires some um, bravery, that. We have to be brave to play this line. You have to have nerves of steel. Now his rooks infiltrated. Also stopping the queen a5 resources. Again, um... Rook d8, bishop d6 is annoying. Or bishop d6 is even more annoying now because I like a good square for my queen. In fact, this is actually looking quite well dire, I'd say. <laughs> to say the least. This, is, this actually is looking really dire. Rook d8, bishop d6. In fact, I'm going to play rook d8. I think it looks like the best. He'll play bishop d6, but at least he's blocking him, his rook from that square. So he's probably going to play rook d6. He's done it. And then, does this hang on? Does this actually desperately hang on? Oh, I dropped c4 though. Which he hasn't taken, so he's going after my own b7 pawn, which is actually going to be dropping by force. This is actually looking very dire. Yeah, this is dire this. I'm thinking of queen a4. Right, please say this hangs up. Please don't say I'm going to lose my pet line. I might just sack the exchange on d6. It's funny in rook 8, e7, which should put an end to the game immediately. And there isn't much I can do about it, so I'm going to sacrifice an exchange to get rid of that dark square bishop. But now his pawn's going to make sure there's another threat of um, it. Also, my own bishop's on free. Oh, and he can also win a rook as well. No, in fact, no, my bishop isn't on free. I'm being a bit paranoid. Right, let's do this pass to see his check move. It doesn't really do anything. Um, ooh, we've got another check here. If we're on a roll, there's another check. Oh, another check. Can I save this game? Oh, his king's absolutely wide open now. But the problem is, mine's even more wide open. So it's much. But if he's not careful, I could mate him. I'll get a perpetual. Oh, I can win a rook now. In fact, this is looking really good, this. Should I take his rook or should I go for, I'm gonna go for mate actually. Is there a force mate? Or do I have to be content with a rook? I'll go after his other rook. I'll take his other rook with check. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> I'll take his g2 ball, he's keeping knowing his rook. Oh my god, this is just absolutely amazing. Come on, can I mate him? I wonder if I can take that pawn. Um I need to make sure we can't protect his rook as well. I should that's got him that. Then he's losing his queen and he's losing his rook. And in fact he's getting mated. <laughs> what a swindle this is. That is just brilliant that. Let's have a look through it. <laughs> so I'll have a, you skip the first few moves, it's all theory. We're probably all, you probably all know this theory by now if you watch these videos regularly. Um, should I think where well, I miss Queen A5? This seems to be a good place where I could have played it. Now you see, I'm getting crushed now badly. This exchange set was designed so when I went Queen A5, you couldn't play Bishop B4. Now all of a sudden, I mean I can't really take his rook though because I get mated, but we have when he's over rook. And I win his rook with check, then I bring another rook in and I mate him. You know what I mean? That is the most brilliant counter attack that ever. Rook takes d6 to what's commotion mark, it's gotta be a brilliant move. Just fracturing his dark squares. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this attacking masterpiece by me. And please leave any comments and thoughts.
Thanks very much.